Hello everybody, this is Gabis Games, and welcome to the podcast with Durky Durk and Nee. Hello! Hello, it's me, Nee. And uh, it's going to be a collaboration with the three of us, each uploading our own video of this, so be sure to check out their videos after you're done with this one. And uh, this is going to be a suggestions podcast. So we each got 10 suggestions for each of our videos, and uh, I'll be the one starting. And me and Durky Durk are going to give feedback on my uh, suggestions. Okay, let's go. What you got? Hooray. All right, the first one uh, is a bit to introduce what we're going to do here. Um, custom chats uh, for custom games. It's going to be my first suggestion. Hmm. Pretty easy feature, um, just so you do not have to chat in the general chat to contact the people that are in your custom lobby. With the confirmation from the developers that custom game mode will at some point become available to the public, I think this That'd is going to be, be awesome. a must. That would be really awesome. I have never been in a custom game, so uh, no. I didn't know that was a problem. Have you never been in a custom game before? No, and I don't. I didn't know that was a problem. They didn't have a chat. That's crazy. I literally, That's really I always chat in when I go into a custom. I literally go in general chat and say, "At custom, are you guys right. ready?" And then like everyone in the general chat is like, "Re, what the guy? What the hell is going on?" That uh, really sucks. So you have to be on Discord and stuff to actually talk, or, uh, or you can't, uh, you or or you have to like spam the entire general chat. Well, that, that's a no-brainer, devs. That, just get on that. That's nothing to talk about. Just do I it. thought when you said custom chat would be that you could create your own channels, and as long as one person online, the channel exists. Yeah, me too, I, I mean, custom if chat all... for custom mode. <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought like different, uh, different, different settings for chats or okay. something like that. Or okay. When you said custom chat, I thought it was custom channels. Like yes. give robot voices or different kind of voices to the audio. I don't uh, know. Overall, there's more chats in the game would be nice as well, I guess. Well, I uh, think that sums it up, though. Yeah, devs, yeah. just do it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> on to That's... the second suggestion, which is one that has been, been collected for a pretty long time, I think. Mirror mode when building. Definitely. Hey. So for the ones I that do that not know too... what I mean with it, um, basically you press a button, and as long as you uh, have that button pressed, so you have to press it again to deactivate it, there, um, whenever you place a, a part, it will mirror it to the other side. This includes asymmetrical parts, so a left and a right variant of certain parts. The game should then automatically pick the right version if you place a left one and place it on the other side of your craft. So you can just... Only build... mirror on... In left to right or like I think back left to or front? Left to right is going to be the most important. I mean, side, okay, yeah, for sideways enough, build, yeah. front, back. I mean, sideways build aren't supposed to be existent, kind of. So I don't yeah, really want to give them yeah. too much support anyway. So definitely. Yeah, right the cab is asymmetrical on a sideways build anyway. But yeah, definitely yeah, we need yeah. that. We just need this. And some parts are just really freaking hard to rotate, like those little crutches. Yeah. And some of those little square bits from from Steppenwolves, I really, and they have little triangle bits, is really hard to try to flip them. That would, it's really annoying. So yeah. I agree, hundred percent. I don't know what, yeah, hundred percent. I also agree, but I think the technical efforts to do this in game is is too big to be done. I don't think we will never happen. To be really? Honest. Well, it exists yeah. in games like Robocraft already, and uh, from the depths, which is another block based builder game and they mm -hmm. all have mirror modes already but yeah, uh, so, yeah. they are pushing the uh, barrier to the devs maybe put an exclusion <laughs> for uh, armor parts only or something mm -hmm. if like yeah. if they're worried about some duplication glitch you're like oh you only have one of them if there you place it there's only you have two yeah know, modules, like yeah. if they're worried about that you can also do on the armor that's and, fine and uh, then we're gonna go on number three here Inner corner okay. shape for avia slopes and outer corner shape for sepal slopes. So I got a picture here. That yeah, picture's good. I didn't know. The, the inner slope from the step of wolves, but there's no outer slope to connect it to. And there's an outer slope for avia, but no inner slope to connect it to. So you have a straight, like, you know, there's, you want, sometimes you want a diagonal piece of armor. But yeah. 
you can't you cannot really do that right now because yeah. you only have either inners or outers and so uh, as, so as alternative to making those wedges now you make those wedges to make diagonal stuff you want an alternative to that Basically, anything that is more built is good for the game you know I'm there's a small that. like tetra part that is like triangular in all three dimensions mm -hmm. and then uh, a inner variant but then rounded so you can work with the avia parts well i think we all want pieces in general so yeah just add that Some, to the like, list more small detailed armor pieces yeah little overall. small pieces little square bits little one by twos or something yeah. yeah, and this may this is easy thing to add to the game. So okay, yeah, Any I mean like have it. the um, you have that one step of armor part that uh is eight long, one wide, one tall, and then it's diagonal, and then at both edges it goes to a point. Yeah, why not add just only that point? Sure, intakes are kind of like that, but just, I know what you just, mean. Just yeah, cut it off. Have only that in uh, that little pointy part. Or just, yeah, have, like, parts are hard. or just half of it. Just like cut it in two and done. Pretty much. I'm good with that, man. Okay, uh, next one is um, something I do not really have a visual for. So stay with me a little bit. Yeah. Armor absorption percentages. Hmm. So um, basically, um, you know that uh, if you, let's say, have a large plow in front of your uh, build, and it gets shot off, you do not get any vehicle damage. But right. if you have like a large ar steppable armor part and it gets shot off, the total health of your vehicle is reduced. Yeah. And because of that, um, it is more important to have like spaced armor or something to like neglect damage as much as possible without like really using big armor parts to tank up damage. Because big armor parts, if you lose them, the cabin health will go down anyways. Sure. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I propose here is, um, let's say the Steppenwolf part has a 100 health points, but then it has a 50% damage resistance. So it can actually tank 200 damage before falling off by direct, hit, by direct hits. So you are... Uh... Saying something to avoid uh, space armor, right? Basically, I want to make the heavier armor more effective by um, giving them a similar um, like behavior to ha like large plows, etc. That they're just really good at tanking damage. Yeah, uh, space so armor you... makes the the game ugly, to be honest. So I'm <laughs> all in that. armor. I mean, it's, space it's, armor it's, to a certain point. It feels. Line. It feels like he doesn't belong on the yeah, game. Yeah, it's just too much at some point. It's like yeah. spider web. You know, it's like yeah. a spider web can block a tsunami shot. That's a one or the five millimeter high explosive <laughs> shell. And all the decor. <laughs> and all the decor Use parts. It as armor. Yeah. So, Kat, you've been here forever, right? I think there, I saw some old videos. It looked like things did work kind of similar, and there were things like indestructible parts. Remember that? Well, on the indestructible parts? Um, yeah, they used to be indestructible parts, whatever that means, I no, guess. Um, there wasn't really indestructible parts. Um, I do know that um, just the cabins were indestructible, kind of, until you run hmm. out of your tire health pool. Okay, well, well, I can look into that. The only undestructible parts on the game now are the wheels on the chase. Chase mode, you cannot take off the wheels off. Oh, uh, yeah, the but those are just for yeah. like chase and uh, like the five and etc. So, no, I'm saying this because the the code for undestructible parts is in, on the game for sure. Yeah. So they can they can add it to to the game if they want. Yeah, I'm talking about two years ago. I saw some really old videos, and there were there were little tin squares, and there were some parts that just said indestructible. So I think uh, there was indestructible was actually related to durability. Right, right, right. right durability right. was a entire different system in the game, and uh, we're pr pretty much everyone that has played with the durability system is happy it's gone. Okay. Let's, let's just keep it at that. Like, well, okay, um, yeah, let's do that. Um, short story, uh, uh, basically, uh, let's say a legendary part has 80 durability. Whenever you lose a match, you would lose one durability point. As soon as it reaches zero, it will be removed from your inventory. And armor too, right? Or just... And in 
the first test stages, armor had also a durability value. Okay, that sucks. Don't do that. And that's and, that's uh, why idea. there that's why there's still a tradable armor section, like an armor trade section in the market, because b b yeah. all the way back back then you could trade armor because armor would actually also disappear, and then the indestructible parts simply had no durability rating. Okay, but well let's not do that again. That that kind of sucks. That go kind of goes to my fifth suggestion: adding old parts back into the game. Um, so the uh, mentioned small um. Uh, grill plates they are those are really similar to like the um uh, uh the santa neon santa sign but mm -hmm. like four by four and two by two hmm. and also okay. the old train plow as well. i have no clue what you are talking about i never saw that part from the game basically imagine a neon santa but then be a, being a normal armor part and being four by four or being two mm -hmm. by two so okay. they're just add an armor as well but there are normal armor parts, so they do not have a market value. So um, the you know, even if people, space armor will still exist, it will become more accessible for normal players that cannot afford neon sensors, etc. And then okay. old train plow overall, it was just really cool looking. It was a much larger plow than the one it, we have currently. Yeah, it's spike in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one that is really long towards the center. It looked cool. It looked really yeah. cool. And also just. The old skins of the weapons; those are World War Two themed. So ah, okay. uh, basically, the uh, cannons that ha had a much longer barrel. So like now you can see how they are like, sawed off barrels, but then they actually had the original length. And then like the executioner really looked like a Flak eighty eight. We even actually used to have a T thirty four eighty five tank turret in the game, and it was supposed to be the Fat Man. Okay. Well, long cannons could be a problem, actually, when you're playing. I mean, even Tsunami is really, really long. So if someone's kind of right at your side and it's kind of stuck on somebody, it can be kind of annoying. I don't know. And a customization is kind of kind of radical, but um, there could be just different... I mean, people always want new cannons, right? So Overall, next just, new cannon can be huge. Just visuals. Like, even add them as customization kits for the existing cannons, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Well, okay, we definitely need new grills, I would say that. We have a lot of grill pieces that are kind of garbage because they're just kind of flat and don't really attach to both sides. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we just need new grills in general. Yeah, but uh, the some common parts that uh, somehow are a copy of the... How to say this? The, how to, the, the name? The decoration parts. If if you are uh, copying to not to common parts the, the the decoration, I think that will be a problem because we want to avoid uh, losing decor as as armor. It breaks the game somehow. Yeah, we, you mean that we have no more armor parts that are similarly shaped as um, the current decor parts that are used as armor. I think all decoration parts that are on the your inventory shouldn't work as uh, real armor, you know? You mean that they can be shot through? E then, exactly. But then they sh they cannot um, ac uh, like be part of the part limit because otherwise they would be become absolutely obsolete. And then you're going to be having the issue of not the game engine not really supporting more than 16 players that each have 80 parts and otherwise like the game is going to lag more no but they could count as a as a part but only for visual you know if you yeah, should but if they're uh, shot throughable uh, then like nobody at higher tiers will use um any decor items because um like the extra percentages of um xp gain isn't worth losing a part of to armor yeah, I understand what you're saying. Still, Anyways, uh, it, it's not a good uh, good solution. Either remove it yeah. or let it be as it is. So, w uh, what cannot I be actually, fixed? I will go into it, a it suggestion is... against that <laughs> later, actually. Uh, but we're now okay. going on to number six, which is um, large variants of existing guns, hmm. which uh, I got three GIFs on. So among other th things, uh, these are um, all like really large guns with a very high energy consumption, even more than the Mandrake. Uh, 
Ooh. So uh, we got a turreted main cannon as one of my suggestions. So think a M1 Abrams style turret. So uh, a turreted tsunami. And then you're looking at like 9, 10, maybe even hmm. 11 or 12 energy. You could maybe integrate a machine gun into it. So like have it being a double weapon. And that That's way, interesting. In that way, hmm. it could actually maybe be a relic. And uh, like... They are reducing the um, cost of relics by increasing uh, the uranium ore gain right now. So um, they should uh, the relics should become easier available. So I think that's why we can actually support adding new relics in, into the game. In this type of game, more guns means more fun. So <laughs> there's not much to say. The more guns the game have, the higher you see in game, the more fun the game will be. So. That's yeah, a cool idea, though, with, with multiple functions, weapons. What yeah, I, I like that a lot. think of the turret, this turreted gun is, like, there's currently no real way to have, like, a real tank replica, hmm. kind of. Like, I mean, you have the armor tracks, you have the carapace cabin, etc. But then you have the mammoth, and it's just so tall that you can't really put it on there. And then the tsunami cannot rotate. So yeah. this thing really shouldn't be higher than three or four blocks, but then have a really big diameter. Basically, a tsunami that rotates. Yeah, that, that sounds that, good. That like eight by eight or ten by ten in diameter, or something like that. Honestly, though, so I think we have different. Uh, we have a little bit of a different opinion. So I actually don't like the tanks. I know you like tanks a lot, and I like tanks a little <laughs> less because this game to me is more Mad Max than War Thunder. Just very, yeah, very different. Yes. So if you really want a tank game, it kind of, kind of bumps right up against the the overall, I guess, aesthetics. Uh, so it's kind of weird. It, it has tanks and Mad Max vehicles together. It's it's kind of weird as it is. Oh, but come on. I kind of we prefer the Mad Maxi stuff. Yeah, How yeah, can yeah. you say that? We have Hoovers. They even changed the <laughs> craft to ride and destroy. Everybody hates Hoovers. Craft to fly and destroy. So yeah, well that's a separate <laughs> issue. They did put that in. Every, you know, people love it or they hate it. And yeah. I guess for me, it's just a total aesthetics thing. Everyone is just an opinion. Yeah. But I I prefer Mad Max over over a nice clean. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, well, it, before it used to be a World War II aesthetic combined with uh -huh. Mad Max, and it actually worked out pretty well. I thought actually that the game actually used to look better than it does now, even though back then the uh, textures were of a lower quality. Mm -hmm. But it... other than that, I do have a, uh, among the other things, I do have a multiple rocket launcher system. So I uh, think a big giant cricket uh, launcher. That should that like really cool. 20 rockets or something. Wow. Like a repeating barrage and then like half a minute of reload or something. All right. So this is not OP how? <laughs> it's a bombardment weapon that has a really long cooldown. It's not like it shouldn't be powerful enough to like instantly kill people. And it should have a pretty big dispersion as well. But and, how do you not kill someone with 20 rockets at the same time? <laughs> I mean, it's not all at the same time. It's like a repeating barrage of like... So it's a big spread two, then. Like, really like pretty much spread. cricket, but then four times okay. as long in terms of barrage time. But so you're hitting, eight arena. Guys, you're hitting eight guys at the same time, but not so much damage. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it would be really funny. I don't know. It'd be really hard to balance, but it's beautiful though. Overall, just like the turreted cannon, like really big weapons are going to be pretty hard to balance, to be honest. Like... Especially the third suggestion here, the Storm Tiger mortar gun, mm -hmm. which is basically gonna be a retcher on steroids. Whoa! I don't know <laughs> if you got the uh, model there. Yeah, it's cool. I uh, uh, literally gave it visual shells, and uh, I think this this specific one should have a minimum elevation, so you cannot like shotgun people with it, and have like a giant blast radius, but like and then deal an equal amount of damage against every part in that radius. Hmm. And uh, Well, I think with with all of our suggestions, anytime you hit up with that problem, how do you balance this? I would say you could always make a different game mode, shove it in something else <laughs> where these things are are viable. I think it'd be cool. I don't want to lose these I mean, ideas. The Tigger, you could balance it by giving it an extreme amount of weight, long reload. Uh, again, difficult mm -hmm. to handle because it wouldn't fire like a Mandrake, but it would fire like a Retcher, but only one shot. Right, and then uh, it's like hard if all if all the weapons are if all the weapons are overpowered, then the game seems pretty much balanced <laughs> to me. Pretty much, that's true. <laughs> you got a harvester and you got this thing. Yeah, it works. 
I mean, this thing would lose against the Harvester because the Harvester get under, could get underneath the mortar again because of the minimum elevation. Could. Yeah, it's they... a matter of who one-shots who. That's the question. That's just a matter of... <laughs> Cross out uh, it, it would be a not... gun that really needs support again because of reload time, similar to the multiple rocket launcher system. Hmm. It would be pretty long reloads. And again, a support weapon. You can pretty much disable anyone. Maybe you could even change the payload to like an EMP to like disable energy on vehicles. Hmm. That could also be interesting if like the damage is gonna be too much. Give it some other payload. Hmm. It gives me a stupid idea about a new game mode where you have set vehicles. One of them is this big, huge fixed turret with one of your huge guns, <laughs> and the other ones are support vehicles. And that could be kind of cool. They made it with the. Uh, oh yeah. A fat man. Yes. They yeah. Made both. But yes, they made. The, uh, actually, they had two two mods like that. They had two the mods with big the scorpions. Vehicles. Yeah, kinda. But and if they're they really two... different. No, so, they, it's a tank with uh, the yeah, fat, one they, fat man. They, they did three of those three build modes. One of them is big black scorpions. Then yeah. big bad blade spines. Those are yeah. that's the upcoming porcupine base mode. Yeah. And then Whoa, the uh... nice. <laughs> yeah. Really? I didn't know that. It's what I was basically saying. you got a car with forward facing boosters and a porcupine and infinite booster fuel and infinite uh, porcupine ammunition. But you die if you get hit by a porcupine twice. Well, this idea I have was all the vehicles are very differently balanced. So one of them is a huge fixed turret, the other ones are different kind of support vehicles. You know what I mean? So they're Kinda all like very, the very different. Fru fools free for all mode. Well, that was that was crazy. That was just crazy. But this one's like not about you and then someone else. This is about you as a team and very very different. Yeah. One has a big one. Everyone has the smaller ones that do different things. Maybe one of them had just had mostly modules or something. I don't know. On that note, go I got a even more of a support item here. Ooh, okay. uh, suggestion number seven: the mobile repair station or mobile repair unit. So I suggest this either becoming a part of a cabin part, so they basically think like a Cerberus that has the cabin and then the active melee part mm -hmm. integrated. This would either be like integrated to be into a cabin or actually be a part on its own. And so there's a picture, right? I do have the 360 model on it, yeah. It's a big cool. gate and uh, it has connection points for frames on both sides. But you cannot connect the frames in between, basically. It has a hitbox that prevents you from building in between it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, so I, I look at the image and I have some issues here. Uh, it looks like a garage, right? You have to put your vehicle inside it to Basically, to but work. you would be able to like extend it upwards and outwards by yeah, like, pressing a button. Why not just make it off the a garage and the cars that are near it get to uh, heal? Maybe just... Uh, Healing, uh... I had a difficult time making that look visually pleasing, so like, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you would have because to of, find yeah. a way to make it visually pleasing. Because, you, know, you, I mean, you know, of all people, you know that there's, with every single freaking type of shape and size vehicle you can make, nothing's going to fit into yeah. any sort of house whatsoever. <laughs> but what if your little repair thing was not the house itself, but a big bunch of tools or something? So you just come into contact with the tools and then it repairs something? Yeah, more dynamic, well, you know? Um, first up, this thing cannot repair everything. It can only yeah. repair frames, wheels, and cabin health. Mm -hmm. So if your weapons get shot off, you're still fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but it can restore mobility and, again, health from vehicles on the battlefield. And, mm -hmm. like, make it possible for people to make runs for the cap or be meat shields. Etc. But it will take a huge amount of energy, like 12 plus energy, to make uh -huh. it not really be able to carry a lot of weapons on its own. Or if it was hmm. a cabin, it would be only be giving 4 or something energy. So again, mm -hmm. like you cannot carry a lot of weaponry alongside with it, because you're supposed to be a support unit. It is interesting how healing is just no way a part of this game. I don't... I don't, yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad I thing or know, that it I, should be, but that is an interesting thing that, that is not Robocraft, there yet. Robocraft, at, at one side, the healing made teamwork way more important. 
Hmm. But it was also kind of broken because uh, whichever team had a better balance between healers and fighters would win, basically. Yeah. It, just, it mattered, mattered much less of the quality and skill of the individual players. It mattered more of like, what luck do you have with team composition? Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I'm not is, even sure whether this should be put into the game. Is repairing the car, right? Yeah, there in the uh, in Robocraft you could fully heal anything. Hmm. One thing I love about this game is that it forces you to think about, I guess, how life is transient because you have this build. You know that things are going to be shot off all the time. By the yeah. end of a match, you, you're just a you're a cab and a wheel and hopefully a weapon, which is kind of I really love that part of this game. So healing. I do have a repair thing for when I do my part, which is very different, but we'll, so we'll take a look at that later. Yeah. Yeah. This is really not supposed no to violence. fully heal the build. It's only part uh, made to like kind of restore mobility. Okay. And also I think by making it like this, it would make it more hard for hovers to get underneath here because hovers would abuse this thing out of like the different daylight out of it that I hmm. do know. I mean. Come on, they're really hard to hit, tiny builds, and they would use the cabin as armor, so they would get healed with their cabin health, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that I would think be it, probably it, really this unfair. design of yours needs to be more dynamic. Half of your design will be, would, a full garage will be a problem, because when yeah. two guys tries to go get repairs, they will block each other, and no one will... Yeah. Get repair. So well, again, I'll, I'll, unless you I'll know, unless that design, I will prove it. Like <laughs> the design you did, you made it, it will be a mess in game. Although, if this was a part of another game mode where there was a garage, that could be something. Add that's that's my mode. that's my fix. Hashtag yeah, that's my fix all the time. Modes. More game mode. That's my big fix to everything. Add a game mode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's okay. Go ahead. Number eight. Transmission modules. So uh, I don't re really have a visual for this because I don't know how to, I would design this visually. Mm. But they are a separate module from uh, engines. So they do not account to engine limit. They will probably have their own limitation to it. But basically they uh, give a buff and a nerf to certain traits of your vehicle. Mm. So let's say uh, one transmission can uh, give you a much higher maximum speed but um slows down uh slows the vehicle down in terms of acceleration or uh decreases its maximum mass or uh boosts its maximum mass at the cost of maximum speed or um acceleration hmm. and oh. for hmm. example you got this really heavy build uh goliath tracks etc and you or since you're already speed limited, you don't really care about maximum speed. And you're like, okay, I will just like decrease my maximum speed and increase my acceleration. So my entire build is more responsive. And let's say you have um, tsunamis on there. You can turn the, uh, turn faster because your high acceleration is responsiveness, etc. So like you can more specialize your builds. Add more dynamics. True. I think it's in it's it's cool. It will be cool to do that. I have a concern at how it how it can break the game. The feature, you know, because yeah. when when you have developers removing something here to add there, if you if you give that power to the players, someone will for sure find a way to break the game. It's like a magic button. It's like every way that yeah. the devs have tried to balance the game, unbalance it again. <laughs> Well, the developers sure. have done some really weird balancing stuff. I mean, well, yeah. Oh, we might this, side with kick, this sidekick is underpowered. Let's double yeah. its damage. <laughs> well, as as much as it's weird and we don't agree with it, it is how the devs wanted it. So if you can just kind of undo what they try to balance, that could make it, um, yeah, interesting. I mean, I guess it could kind of break hovers because hovers are like so lightweight they didn't really care about mass limit. They reduce their mass limit to further increase their speed and or acceleration and responsiveness. But at the same time, then the transmission would need energy, so then they would have mm -hmm. less energy. So that could actually yeah. be a way to balance hovers by decreasing the responsiveness and then among other things, add transmission modules that can increase that responsiveness at the cost of energy. 
So they can remain the same as they are now, but then they would have one or two points less energy to work yeah, with. But yeah, I mean, it's good and bad that we would not have to uh, be so dependent on the devs to balance stuff, but it is an, yeah, it would exactly. be interesting. Yeah, yeah Mr. Nia would be There is a bonus on that. If, if they do that, they will never need to balance the game again. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be broken. It'll be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another thing I would like considered with balancing is why not have an automated system that checks every like you already have the magic locks going on, you know. Hmm. Then just note which weapon is used, and like if weapons are used the most, then they get a slight nerf, so like five percent on damage or something. That's like, interesting. Small, that is interesting. Yeah. But that's not really part of my suggestions. Um, next up is going to be number nine, gun customization. And uh, I want to say ahead, uh, I actually discovered that somebody in the forums made a suggestion post on this. And I got this picture of mm -hmm. of their uh, of the website there. Yeah. And uh, the, I did not know in advance when coming up with this that it already existed. So it was kind of coincidental. But he did a really, really good job on actually like showing how this all would figure out work out so on the picture here we got our short machine gun and you can see it has four different slots here they have a base a ammunition a receiver and a barrel on here mm -hmm. so um let's say um i want to uh, change the short so it um uh, overheats slower then i can like put a uh uh, like a radiated barrel in there, but the radiate like to have it would be a very heavy barrel uh, that would uh, take longer to overheat, but it would also take longer to cool down, and this would be uh, like to replace fusions of parts. Hmm, yeah. So like uh, a um, heated like you can re reduce the overheating time, but um, like cool down time would be suffering in return. And in that, the base mod, I think, would be uh, for customization kits. Mm -hmm. That could perhaps give some small effects, again, positive and negative effects. And also, uh, gun add-on armor packages. So, basically, kind of how the Defender compares to the Factor in the short. You know, big armor, but limited to the first. Let's just say you would have a short, but then it you ha you could you could put a armored box on top of it, and in return it would rotate seventy percent or something slower, but it ha would have a one hundred twenty structure points instead of sixty points. All right. So, question: How do we get these customization kits? Is it the usual paywall? Um, probably either craftables. Um. Or, yeah, I think craftables would be the best way to do it. Because that's what really kills me right now. And or, then um, um, you have, okay. Use, like, like let's say, um, like, again, uh, you would have to short, and then you would click receiver, and then you would have, like, three different receivers. Mm -hmm. And then some receivers actually are strict upgrades for the gun, but they increase power score. Those would save, that's, that would be the rare receivers, because it's a common gun. Those would be costing a little bit more scrap metal and wires and copper. Mm -hmm. Let's say a hundred scrap metals, twenty five copper, ten wires or something. Like affordable. Okay. And then <laughs> with each with each kit you, you can choose what you want out of them or they're just kind of set. There's many, many different kinds of them. There's just kind, many kinds of them, I would say. And there there would be hundreds. I mean you you uh I mean that's an exponential amount of, of kits for per weapon, you know, with all the other weapons. That'd be a lot of kits. I mean, and you, would, you wouldn't is... really have to add a lot of visuals for them. I mean, you can take yeah. apart the shorts, uh, fish, uh, like model, and take the barrel, and then you okay. would have a barrel. You know. Okay. And then the so other question is, once you mod your the thing, visual thing I'm getting from this idea, it's look like a, a battle royale mode like PUBG that. You have the weapon, hmm. then you can add the scope, you can add the magazine to have more bullets, you can add Whoa. something to have yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something like that you are talking about, right? Yeah. Hmm. You have the main weapon, then you, then you, you can add modify something. Them, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the okay. visual thing I'm getting from So basically, idea. you could convert a factor in pretty much a piercer 
by adding a receiver that uh, increases his rate of fire, uh, etc. Like stuff like that. Okay, but then what happens to the PS and? Uh, well, again, like of this um, thing, the bar there would be normal barrel, like common barrels for the common gun, that would mm -hmm. let's say increase overheating time, but then also increase cooldown time, so they would be fi like fair balanced. Okay. And like rare barrels, those would increase the power score, but then either increase overheating time or decrease cooldown time, etc. Well, the key is balance, so that sounds pretty yeah. fair. Yeah, that sounds pretty fair. And fusions, of course, like they're really expensive, but they're also kind of paid yeah. win almost. You could say. Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that later, right? Because I won't go I mean, much into fusions. They would. This would replace the fused parts. So if you have a fused gun, then let's say you would get a gun of that rarity kitted with four random modules of a tier up there. So if you yeah, have okay. a um, fused factor, then you would get a factor with four epic upgrade modules for it. Okay, I know Mr. Nee has some stuff on fusions, we'll talk about, but fusions, yeah, they suck. We'll talk about that later, yeah. right? Yeah. Fusion but, um, is, actually, is uh, uh, end game, yeah, guys. We'll talk about that later. You, you have to see it this way. Fusion is end game. And yeah. uh, people that are leveling or don't yeah. have all factions at max but are not... They uh, don't decrease power score. That's kind of the, the, the right. point. If something, if right. someone has fully fused everything, they are roughly five to ten percent more efficient in yes, battle yes. than anyone else. So another part of the gun editing is gonna be the ammo customization, and that might be a potential fix against space armor. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say the tsunami that normally has high explosive could get like a uh, scorpion esque effect with the armor piercing round. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then, like, a scor uh, scorpion would already have basic armor piercing, but then if you would modify it with high explosive, it would have the armor piercing, and after it pierces, it would explode. But if you would give it an additional armor piercing, it would have double the piercing effect. So it wouldn't interfere with the base uh, perk of the scorpion. Uh, sounds breaky. Well, <laughs> then, you could, then you could have a scorpion ever. with 10 plus block penetration, but uh, wow. I mean, you kind of you kinda need stuff like that to deal with spaced armor, to be honest. Hmm. As long as this hits the frames, you are good with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I by customizing the ammo itself. Yeah. Because right now, the thing about the ammo is you'll have different kinds of weapons that need ammo. So if you customize the ammo, how does that affect everything across yeah. the board? You know uh, what I mean? I mean, like, um, let's say, again, we got this tsunami. And let's say it does 500 damage per shot right now with HE. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because high explosive is one of the most energetic projectiles. So it has a lot of energy, so it does a lot of damage. The armor-piercing shell, that would give it an armor-piercing value but reduce its damage to like 200, but directly onto the target. It's it, it, like it directly in the path that it's hitting. And uh, well, as long as it's not like World of Tanks that you have two kinds of shells and one is premium shells. Uh, no, because okay they, all, they all have like advantage of a yeah. downside. But so, if it goes in that direction, no tanks. No, I mean it's like uh, the high explosive, its damage pattern is like a it's a sphere around the point of impact, but mm. armor piercing would be like a straight line after you penetrate. Is basically where the damage would be divided to, but then it would be go deeper than the radius of the sphere. And then if you have a Draco, what would that do to the Draco? Uh, Draco, I would probably say difference between napalm ish stuff that would like have more range but less damage. Then short range more damage maybe, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, kind of effects like that. Intense fire, it burns. <laughs> then, you, they, then you could have like a blowtorch esque effect that it has like absolute minimum range, but then absolutely burns through anything it touches. Hmm. Basically it's converted not... to a melee weapon. But okay. you could turn to a firebug or something. <laughs> no, firebug is kind of some range, but yeah. Yeah. Overall, just more options for guns would make web like building overall way more dynamic and way more in depth. 
Yeah, more creative. He gets. I yeah, would okay. note. I have to point out. I do want to have these uh, modules be like, you can take them off, and uh, uh, like normal, uh, like without spending anything. Like right now, you have the CKs that you makes the gun untradeable, mm -hmm. as long as they're on there. But if you want to take them off, it costs you uh, scrap metal. I think you should just be able to get uh, take these off, and then like of course, if they are modified, they cannot be traded. But you can normally take them off and then trade the gun as normal. Hmm. Okay. And uh, maybe even like share some modules among the types. So let's say the rare, um, let's say a factor uh, receiver. And like you upgrade the factor and then you have the original receiver. And then you can attach to the existing receiver on the chort. And it will be the same as the upgraded chort receiver. Okay. Sounds like you really want to make good weapons. OP <laughs> a lot <laughs> in no, different I, ways. I, I, I just want to be able to like <laughs> specify what I want because yeah. some, maybe you want to have a uh, let's say a junk bow, but you you want to have more of a um derp, like um one shot effect, so you get a uh, receiver that has a bit more damage, like five or ten percent, but then also has a five or ten percent longer reload. So it doesn't mm. decrease the damage, but it does increase burst damage, for example, because if you really like the dam uh, burst damage effect, stuff like that. Okay, and there are all the people who uh, a... triggered. <laughs> this is a, a very com complex. Uh, this will be a new system on the game. And yeah, this will be, be very complex. Will be added, it will be really complex, and it would make yeah. the game way more dynamic. Okay, but, I uh... wouldn't like uh, different kinds of ammo. That would be just too complicated, but yeah. Well, it, it could if it, if it can fix lesson. if it can fix spaced armor, but just like again, like um, impact of a tsunami, if it explodes, then you get a sphere damage, and then the parts next to your where you were shot got damage as well, but mm -hmm. not parts behind the line of what you're firing at. So spaced armor, like you can you can get a big chunk out of the spaced armor, but you cannot damage anything behind it. Right. And with the armor piercing shell, you could you would take a smaller chunk out of the space armor, but you might be able to actually damage something behind it. And that would stop people from making fix from making space armor. Well, it 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 would make it easier to deal with space armor and okay. uh, etc. So let's go with the last suggestion for me. So number ten is going to be tournaments hosted by the game officials with in-game entry and automated matchmaking. Possibly a clan wars replacement, and uh, better prizes, different better ones. Prizes, hopefully, yeah. Stickers, uh, <laughs> stickers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> parts. I don't know. Uh, like currently, the clan wars is top tier, so rich people getting more rich. Mm. And uh, I think with these tournaments, if you would like one time limit the power score or like limit to certain weapons. You could make it more available for our players and uh, giving rewards, maybe like um, crafting bench access so you can craft the currently uncraftable parts for a limited time. So like you get one use. If you win in the top 10 or something, you get like one use that you can craft one of the uncraftable items so that uh, it doesn't overflow the market with new influx of these uncraftable items. Hmm. But it does yeah. make it like craftable. So like, you could get a uh, step of spider for a normal epic crafting prize. Well, conveniently, that does solve the problem of uncraftable cabs, which, yeah. you know, it, it's just kind of a drag. Yeah, uh, I, I overall know. think the amount of packs they're adding in the game recently compared to normal content. Well, they are getting money that way. It is actually a very successful thing that they've been doing. But um, yeah, as yeah, far sure, as for the sure. players, it, it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts, though. So, uh, Niu, what's your thoughts on it? You trying to kill my channel with <laughs> the replacement of Clan Wars. That's oh, what no, I that's have right. to say. Um, yeah, your, your channel is mainly Clan Wars and yeah. center base, right? Mainly. I mean, yes, yes. Um, like, like I, I would like just to add that um, maybe a small window for tournaments, you know, that uh, you have a specific time on the weekends or on the weekdays, I don't know. Where you, you the, uh... sign into that tournament, 
you need to be online on that tower, then when the tournament ends, you get the prize. Yeah, if it's not too long and you you're been anyone like you want to keep doing the clan wars, but you also can consider you can also do these tournaments in, in, on your channel if you're still a mainly a tournament based channel. Yeah, so, instead of a, a possibly replacement for clan wars, some addition to to the game. Uh, that's also possible. Like a new tab on the. You, just, you go to the market and see what is for sale. You go to the tournament tab and see what is uh, for tournament. Yeah, I mean, today. like, some uh, some people actually might know the Flame Rangers tournaments here. Some of you guys might not, but those are tournaments hosted by a second or a group that's not directly tied to the game developers. But they aren't really very well-known tournaments. And just having like an in-game pop-up saying like, "Hey, there's this tournament going on," mm -hmm. would drastically increase yeah. like how. And are they Russian too? I think it's mostly it's mostly Russian, isn't it? Well, Beta Angel is uh, also ho now hosting some, so there are American ones, but those are in the uh, American time zone. So that sounds Russian, cool. There's like hmm. in the, during the midnight or really early in the morning or really late in the evening for, for you. European <laughs> players. So hey man, that's cool for, for me. European I players, we either have to stay up all night <laughs> to play with English uh, uh, hosted tournaments, or we have to get Google Translate to help us go join the Russians. That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, <laughs> um, isn't that the close that uh, Crossout has to eSport? That the uh, tournaments they do uh, now? Close to yeah. esports, yeah. They are considering doing real prize monies now, though. That would be cool. But that's all 10 suggestions from me, guys. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed listening to the podcast. And uh, again, so, like, you don't even have to, like, watch actually, <laughs> you can even just listen to these. And uh, we will... well, thanks, Kat. That was really nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kat. <laughs> So Don't this is part one, we got part two and three. Yeah, part two and three should pop up in the uh, end screen. So those are all up, those are uploaded by Nii and Dirk Dirk, respectively. They own it, each have uh, 10 suggestions as well. And uh, I'll be reacting on their uh, suggestions. Cool. Nice. So now head over to our channel and we're all set. We'll continue this. Bye. Bye. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys all later. Bye, guys. Yeah, bye. Bye.